Yeah, it was cool. I was kind of watching the progression as the season was was coming to an end, and it was you know kind of touch and go if they were even going to make the playoffs. So it was cool to see them make the playoffs. And then obviously in the first round, it was pretty comfortable. Uh, second round when they lost at home 2-1, I was a little bit worried, uh, or 1-0 or at home maybe the first game. But I knew they lost at home the first match and um, I thought maybe it was going to be a little too much. But it was uh, it was great to see them going on the road and and, and getting the win and, and securing uh, the position back for me. Uh, you know, uh, with ESPN getting the rights to La Liga uh, and then having um, Rio get promoted uh, that same year was was really cool for myself because if if I am covering La Liga games, it, it's cool that Rio's back in the league uh, because obviously I have such, you know, fond memories of playing for Rio, playing in La Liga, being the first American to uh, to play in La Liga and and to have Rio, you know, be back up in the in La Liga for that start uh, meant a lot. Yeah, I mean Rio is you know right in the heart in in the you know in the district of Vallecas and uh, you know Vallecas is a very working class neighborhood. Um, you know, I learned you know a lot of that history obviously when I when I got to Madrid and and played for Rio. You know, Rio is. Uh, comfortably the third club, obviously, when you're talking about Real Madrid and Atletico. And, and, and the cool part about playing for Rio is everybody in Madrid has a soft spot for Rio. You know, the majority are either a Real or an Atletico fan, but they all, you know, love to see Rio have, you know, a level of success as long as it's not against their club and particularly against their rivals club, it's even better. And you know, the, my first season at Rio, you know, we beat Atletico in the first match of the season. Um, after 16 games, we were one point ahead of Barcelona in first place. So so we had a lot of success, you know, right away. Uh, second season, we lost in the quarterfinals of the UEFA Cup. So in the couple of years that I was there, you know, there was a big buzz around the city um, for Rio. And and so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to be there in, in in you know what at that time was you know probably the most successful period in in Rio's history. So it was uh, it was really cool. It's a it's a it's a funky little stadium, you know, wedged right in the middle of a of a city block. You know, there's a big wall behind one goal because there's not enough room to put stands in there. So that's always a little bit interesting and. Um, you know, but it kind of adds to the vibe of Rio as the big underdog, and and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun to be a part of that. And, well, I always wanted to, you know, play in different leagues and, and have different experiences. And as you mentioned, I spent the majority of my career in England. But uh, you know, at that time, I was leaving Leicester City, and the opportunity came. Uh, uh, to to go to Rio after they had just got promoted and try to help them you know, establish themselves. And, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not really sure how it all transpired and, and, and how, uh, you know, and how I became, uh, you know, on their radar and, and, and to move there. And I was just uh, excited for the opportunity uh, to, to, to move to La Liga, as you mentioned, to be the first player, the first American there had been you know, look, I was one of the first Americans. In fact, I was probably the first American to play in England on an American passport. But we had had other Americans who had uh, either British passports or, or, or European passports to play uh, ahead of me. But um, but but La Liga, Tab Ramos had been there, but he had always played in the second division. He hadn't had an opportunity to play in La Liga. So so for myself to, to, to look at that opportunity and to, you know, break some ground as an American and obviously to be in a, you know, a fantastic city like Madrid, you know, I mean, that's, I think, where Rio, after talking to several of my teammates, um, that it, it is a draw for Rio, that a lot of players, you know, getting the opportunity to play in Madrid, you know, is a big draw. And, uh, and, and for me, it was as well. Oh, well, sure. You know, Juan de Ramos was was really you know, starting his his career and 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 wanting to really, you know, stamp that authority on you. Know, getting promoted is key, but then how you, you know, respond to that and and to be able to come in and 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 obviously have the success that he had with Rio in La Liga, 
you know, jump started his career. Uh, you know, you talked about obviously a lot of great players, you know, then, uh, you know, Gerhard Porschner was a big part of, you know, myself having somebody there, uh, another guy going through the experience for the first time playing in La Liga. Uh, you know, there wasn't any, the difference kind of between playing in Spain and playing in Germany. You know, not many players spoke English uh, in in La Liga, whereas in Germany, I mean, my whole team, I mean, you could do our, our team talks in English and probably more people understood it than if you did it in German. So, um, so yeah, so that was a different experience, you know, trying to navigate, you know, not knowing the language, uh, not having many teammates that, uh, uh, you know, Camilo De Pazzo, my goalkeeping coach, you know, that he was massive, uh, spoke decent English, um, was a great coach, you know, that made a big difference uh, for myself. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of funny now, you know, when I, as I get older and I, you know, have to cover Bayern Munich or cover somebody. And, and you know, whenever, you know, my ex-teammates' kids are now playing, uh, that always makes it a little bit funny. I obviously, I have the same situation with my former national team teammate, uh, as I, uh, Claudio Reyna, as I see Gio Reyna playing for Dortmund. So I think that's funny. But when, you know, Hernandez that first year and, and then now his son Lucas playing for for Bayern it's, uh, and, and uh, the French national team is is always kind of funny, but it, I mean, it's, you know, anytime you're a goalkeeper and, and your team has success, you know, yeah, you can be a part of it, but you have to have a lot of good players around you to have that success. And, uh, you know, it really was a, a good squad. And I think Rondé, Wande also understood that maybe if we played a little bit differently, you know, I mean, I didn't throw the ball out very much and that was by design, you know, Wande wanted me particularly at, at uh, you know, at Estadio Vallecas to be able to hit that ball, uh, you know, deeper in and just be a little bit different from the other teams. And, and, uh, and I think we all embrace that. Well, I think first and foremost, you kind of learn how to speak on the pitch. Uh, you know, you can, you know, like a lot of Americans, I mean, I took Spanish in school, but it's, it's a completely different ball game than kind of learning the odd nouns and trying to put some some sentences together that that really don't mean anything you know and you know never on the pitch did i learn um uh, to ask my teammates where the library is so it was a little bit uh, you know you had to kind of learn some uh, yeah donde esta la biblioteca never really you know came out a lot in in matches so you know you kind of first of all figure out how to communicate um you know with your defenders and you know and then uh you know be able to uh you know give a very uh stop start interview in spanish kind of is the next stage uh but but it's it, it's difficult there's no question about it and it's a big reason why a lot of a lot of players when they move to a different league it takes them a little bit of time to settle in i think for myself you know in a lot of ways a shot's a shot you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, who's taking it. If, if the person speaks English or not, I still have to save it or not. And, and so, you know, that was, you know, that was the most important thing for me, first and foremost. I mean, obviously when you're a club like Rio, your, your first and foremost, your goal is to stay in the league. And if you can, you know, go into uh, the end of the season without looking over your shoulder in the relegation spots, that's a bonus. If you find yourself, you know, up in, up in, 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 in higher altitudes, then even better. But, you know, first and foremost, it's about you know, just establishing, establishing yourself back in La Liga. And, you know, it's always a tough task, obviously. I mean, it's a very competitive league. I mean, my first, my first season, you know, three of the four uh, Champions League finalists were Spanish teams, and none of those three teams won the league that year. So it's obviously a, a very competitive league.